The Association or Associative Law Here's one that's dreadfully complicated to prove, but actually just means that if all the terms are connected with the same type of gate, then the brackets don't matter. You might be wondering why, in the OR version of the Associative Law, I have three written expressions and only two circuit diagrams. Well, that's because all of these are literally the same. There is no third way to build the gates to represent the third option. It's just one of the existing two. Now that might give you some hints as to why this rule is going to be proven true. It's got a big old truth table too, since we have three possible terms. And just remember, all that stuff on the left are just the possible input values. So it's the normal two input truth table for A and B, uh, where C is off, and then the same normal two input truth table for A and B, where C is on. Let's start with B or C. Or gives us a 1 if either or both the inputs are 1. First row is both zeros, so a 0 here. Same here. There's a 1, so we get a 1. And again, and again, and again. Two 1s here, that's still a 1 output, and another one here. Next column needs the A column, or uh, the B or C column, to be 1 to get a 1 out of it. So, nope. Yep. And then a big old yes all the way down at the bottom. What's next? Well, A or B have to be 1 to get a 1. So, nope, yep, yes again, and again. Aha! A 0 here, because it's all zeros in the input. Then a 1, another 1, and a 1 again to end. The next column needs a 1 in either the C column or the A or B column. Nothing here. Then 1's all the way to the bottom. Hmm, that seems very familiar. The final one is a bit odd. Uh, we look at three inputs, A, B, and C. If there's a 1 in any of them, then the row is set to 1. All zeros here, so a 0 output. And then, what a surprise, it's 1s all the way down. So yeah, the three columns are the same, and that proves the law. Let's take a look to see if it still holds true when we use AND gates to connect the terms. Again, looks that way, given that I can only illustrate it in two different ways, and there are three different written expressions. Anywho... A similarly large truth table is presented to us again here. Remember, we're dealing with ands, so we need all the inputs to be 1 before we get a 1 in the output. Let's start with A and B. 0, 0, 0, aha, a 1, as both inputs are 1. Then 0, 0, 0, oh, and a 1 right at the end there. Moving across, we need a 1 in both the C column and the A and B column to get a 1 output. 0, same here, same here, and again, another one, zero again, zero, and finally, a double one gives us a one output. Now, this seems awfully suspicious to me that this is the opposite of the results we were getting from the OR associative law. B and C now, nope, nope, zero, 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 another zero, and phew, a one, and another final one. The next column is the full expression. Both A and the B and C columns need to contain a 1 to get a 1 here. Nothing, nada, nope, not on your Nelly. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, at last, a pair of 1s giving us a 1 output. So, the rules holding thus far. Finally, the weird expression. Now, using three terms, we need a 1 in each column to get a 1 output. You won't be surprised to note that that doesn't happen until the bottom, so it's a whole mess of zeros before we get to the one at the end. All three columns match, so the rule is proven. If all the connections use the same gate, then the brackets are absolutely meaningless. What does that actually look like in practice, then? Here's an expression that at first glance might seem complicated, but it's only really a two-mark question. B or A or D in brackets, or 0 or D in brackets, or C. Let's chunk. It's all ors, but the brackets chunk separately inside a mega or. But if you've been paying attention, you'll know that it's all a bit of a con. Those brackets don't matter because they're all joined with ors. So, be gone. Off with you. Now, 
Notice how the chunking has changed. It's all one big chunk connected via ORs, meaning that if we spot any rule here, it'll simplify the entire thing and, oh yes, OR0 is the identity law, meaning that anything OR0 is itself. And the OR0 disappears from our expression. And that's it. Oh no, hold on. A repeated term is there. That's covered by the idempotent law. And repeated terms joined by an OR simplify to just one of them. Only one D for your expression. Bye bye. Now we're really done. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to get more computer science content.